Santa Barbara City Council appointed Rebecca Bjork as city administrator. Bjork has worked with the city for more than 33 years as the interim community development director, public works department director, and the water resources manager. Bjork has also served as the interim city administrator since September. The city says her track record of accomplishments will help her succeed in the day to day management of city operations. The indoor mask mandate is coming to an end in California. It officially expires after today, meaning it's gone at 12.01 a.m. tomorrow. The state says those who are unvaccinated are still required to wear a mask indoors, and the fully vaccinated are strongly encouraged to keep wearing masks, but it's no longer a rule. State leaders made the decision to drop the mandate after COVID cases and hospitalizations decreased dramatically, but the state's top health officials say students will still be required to keep their masks on at school for now. Officials will keep track of COVID cases and vaccination rates before making any future changes. The school situation will be reassessed in just about two weeks on February 28th. People up and down the coast are getting ready for those masking rules to change here tomorrow. The county is following California Department of Public Health guidelines for those who are vaccinated to allow them to go in buildings such as restaurants and stores without a mask. Masks will still be required in certain settings such as nursing homes and on public transportation. For schools, the K through 12 rules will be reevaluated on February 28th. One of the state's largest counties, LA, was waiting, but this afternoon said it will also ease back on their mask rules. Health officials there say the coronavirus numbers still need to come down more even with these changes. So if you travel, double check the rules where you're going. Business owners are preparing for tomorrow's new COVID rules. News Channel reporter Patricia Martellotti talked with some relieved restaurant workers in Santa Maria. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I can't wait. Bertha Steers at Me and Ed's Pizzeria is excited for the mask mandate to be lifted Wednesday. Especially for my customers and my employees. They hate it. It's hard to work with them on. Oh my gosh. Especially for Hector Del Rio, who works in the kitchen with a health condition. Very frustrating. Uh, I personally have asthma, so it's, yeah. <laughs> Starting Wednesday, Central Coast Health Departments will lift its indoor mask mandate. Customers at Anthony's Jewelers in Santa Maria say wearing a mask is nothing short of easy. I, I get extremely frustrated every time uh, I am told that I have to go into a business establishment to wear the mask. And... Uh, uh, I do it reluctantly, but I do it out of orders, actually. But starting tomorrow, me and Ed's and Anthony's Jewelers will be lifting the mask mandate for staff and customers. I'm for that. I'm sick and tired of masks. It's been very frustrating. Um, I have a hard time breathing with the mask on. So glad that this is coming about because it, it's very hard. And I know I'm not the only person because I talk to a lot of my customers and they all say the same thing. When you're like hustling, you're busy, you're running around and it comes down, especially with the glasses, they get all foggy. Oh my God, it's not a good thing, but thank God. In Santa Maria, I'm News Channel reporter Patricia Martellotti. The Santa Barbara County Office of Education will set up another vaccine clinic this week. It will be in Goleta this Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. in the Community West Bank parking lot on Hollister Avenue. COVID vaccines, flu shots, and free at-home COVID test kits will be available. The Abel Maldonado Community Youth Center in Santa Maria reopens following a COVID-19 closure. The center closed for two weeks because some employees tested positive. The city says the facility was thoroughly sanitized and employees were cleared to return. The center is open to teens in 7th through 12th grades on weekdays and Saturdays. Disposable face masks have generated a mountain of medical waste during the COVID-19 pandemic. A company in Taiwan says it's found a smart solution by turning old masks into useful electronics. Tina Krause has the story. Scenes like this of pollution from the pandemic scattered on streets and clogging oceans got engineer Arthur Huang thinking. This can be a mask today. It can be completely something else tomorrow. His company, MiniWiz, is giving old face masks a new life, recycling them into wireless phone chargers. His name is Wally. Taking inspiration from Hollywood's Wally robot who was left to clean up a dirty planet, Huang created Trash Presso, a solar powered recycling machine aiming to do the same. The robotic device shreds medical masks, heats them up, and turns them into a sort of plastic dough. 
these plastic waste, especially the mask, is actually almost 100% made from plastic. It's polypropylene based. All that plastic creates a hard shell, which is made into a wireless charger using electronic parts. This is a function that everyone needs or everyone wants, especially during the pandemic. Bank executive Cindy Lin saw her recycling efforts pay off after asking employees to hand over their used masks. She says we collected around 10,000 of them and they were converted into colorful phone chargers as gifts for everyone. One charger is made every three minutes. In a venture, Huang hopes will inspire others around the world to use their energy to make a difference. Tina Krause, CBS News. Brilliant. Hancock College is helping high school students apply for financial aid. News Channel reporter Karen Cruz Ordunia tells us more about the program. Right now, what we're doing is we're going out to all the high schools um, from Pastor Wills to San Inez. Hancock College is stepping up to help high school students across the Central Coast with their FAFSA or DREAM Act application. It is partnering up with CalSOAP, a state program that provides information to students about college and financial aid. We're making sure that all the students um, put in their applications before the deadline. The program is called Cash for College. Any high school student who needs help applying for FAFSA or the DREAM Act application can go in a workshop and get the assistance they need. CalSOAP says students need to bring their tax information as well as their parents' information. Some at Regetti High School went in Tuesday afternoon to benefit from this help. It's helped me because all my counselors have guided me to go to college and support me. CalSOAP says staff members have been busy since last fall, and there has been at least 40 Cash for College events since October up until this month. I'm happy to be here helping out students pulling out the financial aid, which it's amazing having those extra resources for the students. A resource high school seniors can still benefit from. It is not too late yet. There are a few workshops left before the March deadline, including one at Hancock College. The workshop at Hancock is set for next Saturday, February 26th in person. In Orchid, I'm News Channel reporter Karen Cruz Orduña.